What's good, everybody? We are exactly one week away from the start of the Masters week, sort of. And as basketball winds down and football is over, we're expanding the brand of the early edge. So each and every week, starting this week, we're going to have a golf-only episode every Tuesday. Drop it into your feed. I tell you all the time, turn on those notifications so you always know when we have new content coming in. Also, if you use the promo code EDGE, we're going to give you 30 days for free. All the simulations, all the cappers, all the analysis, 30 days for free if you use the promo code EDGE. But you know if we're doing a golf-only podcast, you know who my partner's going to be every single week. Let's bring him in right now. He is Rick Rungood, Rick G from the First Cut Podcast. Rick, we have our own show. Finally, the seas have opened. The skies have parted. It feels good. It does feel good, Coach. Don't don't click away yet. I know golf. It's not as flashy as some of the other sports. You don't get the outcome as quickly, but I promise there's plenty of money to be made uh, in the world of golf. We're going to have a lot of fun. I think we're going to pick a lot of winners. We're going to educate, and we're going to entertain. Those are the two things we always do at the early edge. All right, so let's jump right in as we head into the Masters. And by the way, Rick, next week uh, on the first cut, we're going to have daily content <laughs> leading all the way up to the start of the Masters. So they nobody will go into the Masters ill-prepared for your betting needs. But this week, it's about the Valero Texas Open. There's some big names that always like to play prior to the Masters, prior to a major kind of tell the people at home what they can expect a little course preview this week yeah Valero Texas Open it's it's being held at TPC San Antonio and it's been held every year uh, since 2010 at this venue so we have a lot of great course history we have guys who as you mentioned coach they like to play their way into majors or they always show up at TPC San Antonio we have a lot of Texas based golfers and it's kind of a big boy course it's a par 72 some of the par fives are over 600 yards it's going to play over 7400 so you want to be able to knock it around there, but uh, we've seen some guys have a lot of success. Charlie Hoffman, year over year, seems to find a way to put his name in the mix, and we've got a pretty decent field. You know, Tony Finau is going to be teeing it up. Scotty Scheffler is going to be teeing it up, and then here's the big storyline you're going to hear all week long, Coach. Ricky Fowler has to win to get into Augusta National. Joel Damon, who just won in Corrales, has got to win to get in. That's the storyline, the last chance to punch your ticket down to, uh, to get you onto Magnolia Lane. You know, it's kind of funny that Joel Damon chooses the one week, I guess there's a couple of weeks during the year, uh, that are opposite field events that don't carry the automatic Masters invite with them. But he's not going to give it back. He's not going to say, hey, let me wait for another week because there are a lot of perks that come with that victory. And speaking of Ricky Fowler, he's played in the, in the Masters every year since 2010. It's going to be a lot different without him in the field, but he hasn't earned it. His game doesn't warrant playing at Augusta. We'll break his game down all of next week but let's talk about this let's talk about your board and let's start with phil mickelson he's been very very average at best he's playing this week do you like him in any kind of matchup I do like to fade him, coach. Yeah, as you mentioned, he has been he has been average at best. Even some of the finishes that he's had recently have been better. And I'm still going, wow, it looks like whack-a-mole out there. It looks like, you know, one one round he's hitting the driver great, then he loses it. Then he can putt for, for nine holes at a time. And then he looks like the worst putter on tour. So I'm taking Sam Ryder at minus 125 over Phil Mickelson. That's just a head-to-head matchup. Ryder's got back-to-back top tens. The way he's playing, hitting his irons very well, that usually sustains itself from week to week. So I'm in on Ryder over Phil Mickelson and make sure at home some books like I use several different ones but some will put a head-to-head tournament and then it'll change into a round one make sure you hit the tournament matchup when you're making this play from Rick that's minus 125 Sam Ryder has been dynamic the last couple of weeks especially uh, playing in the wind Uh, and I love him in this spot Uh, second Jordan Speed his game I think we can stop with is he back he is showing up every single week should have gone farther in the match play But there is a way that if you don't have the odds you like, you can increase your odds by putting them in a three-way. What three-way do you like Jordan Spieth in? Yeah, that's it's a great point, Coach, because when Dustin Johnson withdrew, I kind of missed out on the Jordan Spieth number, and now the outright mm-hmm. number is not one I'd really like to bet, but I want to get some exposure to him. So I have Jordan Spieth in a three ball, so that's him beating both Tony Finau and Scotty Scheffler. Finau's been okay. He's been fine. We know he had those back-to-back runner-up finishes. He hasn't been as good recently. Scotty Scheffler just had to play seven matches over five days at the WGC mm-hmm. match play. Sunday was grueling, and Jordan Spieth rolling, absolutely rolling right now. He's got the irons dialed in and if he can start making some putts early uh watch out he might snap that three and a half year winless drought uh one week maybe earlier than he might want to coach leading into the masters 
Well, I, th- I think if you put a lie detector on him, he would tell you that a win in Texas would mean almost, almost as much as winning uh, at Augusta. Now, there's always some value when you click at top 10s and top 20s. And when you go to a week like this, when there are top names, but not all of them, right? Give me somebody that you like under the radar, has a pretty good number next to their name that nobody's talking about. Yeah, Andrew Putnam. This is what I would call a top-heavy field. So after the top-heavy guys, it's kind of a lot of no names, but that's where the value is, Coach. And Andrew Putnam, I have uh, to finish inside the top 10 at 6-1, to one, plus 600. Well, he's been like doing it. just that a handful of times in his recent starts. Waste Management, T7. Puerto Rico Open, T5. And the Arnold Palmer Invitational, T4. That's all in his last six or seven starts. And what I really like about that, Coach, those are three completely different courses, completely different strengths of field. It shows diversity in his game. It shows that he can travel. That's a really good sign. It's six to one to finish inside the top 10. Sign me up for that. Give me all of that. You know, I go back to Ferris Bueller's day off when I hear Sloan, Sloan Peterson, come to the principal's office. Well, there's another Sloan that's starting to make his name on the PGA Tour. Do you like him this week? Yeah, it's Roger Sloan, a fellow Canadian of our defending champion, Corey Connors. Roger Sloan, uh, you might not know the name, but he has piled up three consecutive top 25 finishes, and he's doing it at, again, a variety of courses. Punta Cana, Puerto Rico Open, and Honda Classic, PJ National. That'll that'll chew you up and spit you out. So I like Roger Absolutely. Sloan, a top 20 at four and a half to one on your money. This is not a huge field. It's 140 golfers. He's got to beat uh, the top eight. 80% of them. He's been doing just that. And he pays off uh, four and a half to one. Now we always talk about uh, when we educate people at home with the entertainment, that when we give you these props and a top 10, a top 20, it's considered a prop. You don't want to make the full size play that you'd make on a head to head, let's say. And especially that is true. If you're talking about picking somebody to win, give me two names this week that you think there's really good value on with the number next to their name. Yeah, g- great point, Coach. I mean, you're talking about these are these are not uh, coin flips. You know, minus three and a half yeah. points on NBA. These are these are these are six to one, four and a half to one. And when you get to outrights, thirty three to one for Brendan Steele. Brendan Steele has not missed a cut in the calendar year of 2021. That's eight in a row. He has bookended them with a, t- a fourth place finish at the Sony, a third place finish at the Honda Classic. He has won this event before, so I like him at thirty three to one. And then Chris Kirk, my goodness, what he's doing from tee to green right now is is absolutely phenomenal he is 35 to 1 he's going to require his putter to heat up a little bit for him to be in contention and for him to hoist a trophy on sunday but the rest of his game looks absolutely sublime and at 35 to 1 that is quite the payoff if he can get it done i feel like his story rick needs a book in it needs a bow is it's, it's got to end with a win and why not a win this week at the valero texas open that's what I feel like heading to the Masters. Are you kidding me? You don't think that they'd be all over Chris Kirk at the Masters next week? Uh, all right, we're up against it. Grab your paper, grab your pencil. Here we go. Here's the recap for Rick G's picks for the Valero Texas Open. Again, we're going to be doing a golf-only early edge every single Tuesday. Sam Ryder head-to-head over Phil Mickelson. You only land a quarter there. Spieth in a three-way over Tony Finau and Scotty Scheffler. That's coming back at plus 163. And then it's some prop bets. Putnam, that's Andrew Putnam, top 10 plus 600. Uh, Roger Sloan, top 20 plus 450. And then a couple to win. Brendan Steele to win plus 3,300. And Chris Kirk, Chris Kirk to win plus 3,500. You've got your marching orders. Let's ever take every single ticket straight to the pay window on Sunday. Oh, we love these golf shows. For Rick Run Good, Rick G, for the jeweler, puts it all together. I am the coach. Remember, this is the only place. Every single day, whether we're talking about golf, whether we're talking about baseball, whether we're talking about basketball, we've got it all right here. Your daily early edge. Good luck.